All right, we're in chapter 10 of Zach's Programming with Visual Basic, and I'm working on exercise two, the palace solution. So I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna take the instructions, just move them out of the way and um, go from here. So it says use windows to copy rectangle.vb, which I have here, into the palace project folder. So they want us to like drag this file over and then in Visual Studio, add the file to the project. But here's the thing, Visual Studio itself, if I go to Palace Project and right click and add existing item, I can then choose rectangle.vb. So I save that to the desktop and I click add, it adds it to the project. And then also it copied it into the project folder for me. Okay, so we really don't have to drag it into the project folder we can right click on Palace Project in the Solution Explorer and add it that way. And you can also go to Project, Add Existing Item, and you could have done it that way as well. But anyway, we have rectangle.vb added. Let's uh, add our name to this. And today, okay, that was uh, step one. Step two, modify the rectangle class. That's what we're in, the rectangle class to use doubles instead of ints. Okay, so double and width is then a double. I'm gonna click on int length, which is now a double. And it's kind of silly that the name of it is int length. So I'm gonna right click on it and click rename. And then you can just start typing. So I'm just gonna type dbl length. Okay, and it's gonna rename um, int length, dbl length, and you can say, do you want to also include any comments or anywhere that it's a string? And then it says it's going to update six references in one file. So you can see the green stuff that it's being updated and apply. All right, so then let's also do the same thing with int width. I'm going to rename that to dbl width. All right, so all I did was I right clicked, I chose rename, and then you just start typing and that'll do your find and replace for you, okay? Um, now we have a couple of red squigglies, so a couple of ways you can see them, obviously the red squiggly text in your code, but then also on your scroll bar, you can see there's an error here, there's an error here, and there's an error here, okay? Now the error is that these were ints, so this property for length says it's an integer, well, it's not, it's now a double, okay? So this returns a double. And then when you set it, you don't give it an integer, you give it a double. So basically everywhere we see integer, we're gonna replace it with double. All right, so we change that property, we change that property, and then the get area function um, returns a double now. Okay, it takes a double and multiplies a double. There we go. So we have three places that we changed integer to double. Now, that was part B. Part C is change the name of get area to get area sq feet. There's that. And then add another method to the class. Use get area square yards as the method name. That should method should calculate and return the area of the rectangle in square yards. Um, so I'm going to take this. I have my cursor in the beginning of for me line 48. Okay, the first line of this function. I'm going to hold down shift and hit down three times. That cursor is now right before end class, and the, the three lines above it are selected, and then control D to duplicate that. All right, I just want some blank lines in here to make this visibly separate. And this function name is get square yards. And square yards would be if you took the feet and divide it by three and multiply it by the width divided by three. Right? Because if we had, let's say, three feet, um, we take the three feet divided by three, that gives us one yard. This would also be one yard. So get square yards is that. Um, so that's a simple enough way to do this. And then we can save this. And then we actually also have a calculate button here. Let's see if this is doing anything. This is doing nothing. Calculates number of square yards. Um, so required square yards, we need to fill that in. Let me see if this is doing anything for us. It's not. 
All right, so what we need to do is I'm going to need variables to hold the user input, create a new instance of the rectangle class. And let me look at this here. This does have a constructor that takes two arguments. It takes length and width. So I'm going to put in my code here, length width. It's reminding me that when I make a new instance of this class, that's what I'm going to pass to it. Um, then I'm going to call by calling it square yards and put the result of that into uh, whatever this label is called here. This label is LBL square yards. Oh, and then we need to um, parse the user input into the variables. All right, variables to hold the user input. Um, dim dbl width as double, dim dbl length as double. Thought that looked funny. Double. Okay. And then parse the user input into the variables. Um, let me just see here. I mean, it's pretty safe to assume that length and width, um, these are only accepting numbers in the backspace key, so they should be accurate. Um, but the only thing is, let me just check. Yeah, we want to make sure that this is not empty. Um, so I'm going to put up here, if length or width are empty, show an error. So if txt length dot text dot trim is equal to string dot empty or else txt width dot text dot trim is empty then so I have two different ways to use the empty string here right I would choose one or the other it's bad coding to use both like that um, if either of these are empty message box dot show um, please enter the length and width. This is an input error, whatever you want to call that um, error message that pops up. We're going to give them the OK button and we're going to give an error icon. And then I'm going to exit the sub procedure. All right, so we'll start with that. Um, let me throw this on separate lines so you can see everything on one screen. All right. Now we have the variables to hold the user input. And now we can parse this into it. So I'm going to um, double dot try parse. I'm going to take txt length dot text dot trim. We probably don't need the trim because based on this, there's no way to put a space in there, but good programming practice to include it anyway. And we're going to put that into dbl length. Um, let's see, length width. Let's just keep these in the same order. We're always doing length then width, length then width, length. And then this one, control D to duplicate it, length and width. All right, remember your try parse method returns true if successful, false if not. So you could put this in a if not DBL try parse, then you can, you know, show an error message. Um, error reading length, something like that, right? This would be a more robust, complete way to do it. Um, but I'm pretty sure you can't screw that up or the user can't screw it up. All right, so now we need a new 
instance of the rectangle class. And this is carpeting, so it's a room that we have an instance of this rectangle class. So I'm going to say, <clears throat> sorry, uh, dim room as new rectangle. And my constructor for rectangle has two options. One is an empty constructor, and the other one takes the length and the width as two integers. All right. And that's what we want to use. So I'm going to send the length and the width. Oops. Okay. So I'm sending it into the rectangle class. Um, however, I missed this here. We have some integers here that I missed. Um, the constructor takes two doubles as well. Let me make sure I scroll through here and I'm even going to find like into, okay, there's no more integers. So I did forget in the constructor <clears throat> that the constructor that takes two arguments, uh, make those two doubles. So now our uh, instance of the rectangle class takes the length and the width in there. And then we are going to call get square yards. So I can do room dot get square yards. Okay, there's no reason to send that a length and width because it is using the length and width of this um, this object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it into LBL square yards. So LBL square yards dot text is equal to room dot get square yards. And I'm going to send that to a string and I'll make it a number with two decimal places. Let me just check the assignment to see if they specify this. Oh, they say one decimal place. Good thing we checked. All right. Let's run this. So I'm just going to start with three and four, a simple one. 1. 1.3. Hmm. Is that right? Well, if I take three times four, that's 12 square feet divided by three divided by three gives me 1.333. So, yep, that seems right. If I come back here and say this is uh, the length of the room is 10.5 and the width is 8.7. Calculate that, 10.2 square yards. Well, 10.5 times 8.7 is that divided by 3 divided by 3, 10.15, that rounded up to 10.2. So it looks like that works nicely. All right, that was everything for Palace Solution.